everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Always demand Horlicks, the original malted milk by name. Don't accept a substitute for it. Horlicks, you know, is made from only rich, full cream milk and the best of wheat and malted barley. That's why, for flavor and richness, and for results, too, Horlicks is so superior to imitations. Mere mechanical mixtures of skim milk and inferior malt powder, uncooked cocoa, and a high percentage of ordinary sugar. You can't expect to find Horlicks nourishing, energy-giving qualities in those mixtures. No, Horlicks malted milk stands unequaled. Rich in precious vitamins and mineral elements, Horlicks is a great food drink for growing children. It helps children to develop sound and healthy bodies, good bones and teeth. And Horlicks is so delicious, so tasty, children never have to be urged to drink it regularly. Horlicks malted milk comes in both natural and chocolate flavor. Get a package of Horlicks from your druggist tonight. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Yesterday, Lum announced that he and Abner were going into a new business in order to raise some immediate cash while their matrimonial bureau is getting on a paying basis. Abner is confined to his bed as the result of the fake automobile accident that Lum devised to arouse Elizabeth's sympathy so that she would listen to Abner's explanation of their recent misunderstanding. Abner is living in mortal dread that his wife might learn that the automobile accident was a fake and that he and Lum have allowed Squire Skimp to swindle them out of their jot em down store while she was visiting in Texas. As we look in on our old friends today, we find Dick Huddleston over at Abner's house discussing the accident. Listen. No, all I know is that automobile hit me. I don't know who it was or what kind of car or nothing. Well, I told Elizabeth I'd uh, try to help her find out who it was, Abner. She was asking this morning if I wouldn't help her. Yeah, I know she's awful interested. She's been asking me questions about it all day. Well, she's pretty mad about it. I feel sorry for whoever done it if she finds out who it is. <laughs> I reckon she told you what she done to Ezra Seastrong. Ezra? No. Well, she was out this morning trying to find out who done it, and she seen Ezra Seastrong sitting in his car, and his car had a bent fender and a broke headlight where he'd hit a cow last week. But she never asked him no questions, just reached in there and snatched him out and gave him a good flogging, throwed him back in and walked off. <laughs> but I know that Ezra never done it. No, no, I know it weren't Ezra. <laughs> and I reckon the licking she'd give him a do him good anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd like to find out who it was that hit you, Abner, and see what he's dealt with for it. Well, sir, I don't believe we'll ever find out who it was. I, I just got a feeling that we won't. Well, now, I'll find out who it was if he's in Pine Ridge. Well, I wouldn't look too hard for him, Dick. I wouldn't want to cause nobody no trouble over him. You mean that you think it's all right for... Somebody to drive around town here, break neck speed, and run over you, and break both your arms, and not even stop to see how bad you were hurt? Well, I, I don't think he aimed to do it. Now, I don't think he aimed to break uh, both arms anyway. I think it was just an accident. Why, sure, I don't think you run over you on purpose, Abner, but you ought to be taught a lesson. There's too much reckless driving around here. Yes, there is. We've got speed laws here in Pine Ridge, and they ought to be in for it. Our citizens ought to get together and see that they are, too. Well, you're the constable. It's up to you to see if they're enforced, Abner. Yeah, yeah that's right. I, I am, ain't Well, I, I don't think that the fella would hit me, though. I don't believe he was driving reckless. Well, he must have been if he's driving down the main street that fast and didn't even blow his horn. Didn't he blow his horn? Well, you said he didn't yesterday. I did. Well, he, he must not have then. I, I know I wouldn't tell no story about it. You don't know what color the car was, Abner, or anything about it like that, do you? No, I sure don't, Dick. I don't recollect the thing. Now, uh, wait a minute. Come in. Well, howdy, Lum. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Well, Lum, um, Abner. <laughs> Come right in. Draw yourself up a rocker. Then. Yeah. How are you feeling today, Abner? Oh, all right, all right. I'm tired of laying in bed this way. Now, how's Elizabeth feeling? Elizabeth. I mean, is she still in a good humor with you? Oh, yeah, she's in a good humor now. Well, I think it's all right for you to get up and stir around a little. Eh? Well, I don't know now, Lump. I was him. I wouldn't get up for a few days yet. You had a terrible shock there, you know. Yeah, that's right. I, I forgot. You you better stay in bed till you tell Elizabeth about us losing the jot em down store, Abner. You'll have a shock worse than an automobile hitting you if you don't. Haven't you told her yet, Abner, that you and Lum aren't in the store business anymore? No, I, I just can't bring myself to do it, Dick. I know how mad she's going to be. Well, now, you better tell her. 
she's going to find out about it sooner or later, and the better get it off your mind right away is what you better do. That's what I've been telling him, Dick. Well, I started to this morning. I started to question her about it and asked her what she'd think if we was to sell the store. What'd she say? Oh, my goodness, she just blowed up. Said that was one thing that she wouldn't stand for at all. Mm. Just might and I went into high hysterics over it. But I calmed her down by telling her not to get excited about it, that we weren't going to. Well, now, you're just making bad matters worse talking that way. Yeah, you sure are, Abner. Yeah, I know it, but I couldn't help it. She made me promise that I'd never sell my interest in the store. And you promised her that, knowing that you'd already sold it? Yeah. I, I'm just afraid I got myself out farther on a limb than I already was. Well, oh, Abner, won't you never learn to keep that big mouth of yours closed? Every time you open your mouth, you put your foot in it. Yeah, I know. I... Huh? Nothing. Well, it looks like you got yourself in a jam, Abner. Oh, well, Lama was just joshing about me putting my foot in my mouth. <laughs> he, he, just, he just saying that. He know that I can't do it. I mean, about this store business. Looks like to me you fellas are going to have to get a stock of merchandise and get that store open before Elizabeth finds out anything about it. Uh, Grannies, I believe that's a good idea, Dick. Yeah, I know it is. I wish we could. Yeah. I ain't been happy since we sold out over oh, there. Oh, me neither. I'd just give Mike and I anything if we could start up again. Special with Elizabeth feeling the way she does. All we got to do now is figure out a way to get the new stock of merchandise. Well, <laughs> what was this new business that you was telling me we was going into yesterday, Lom? I've been waiting all morning for you to come over. Why, uh, yeah, I'll tell you about it some other time. Well, here, now, you fellas want to talk business. I'll get on out of your way here. Oh, no, sit still, Dick. I never meant it that way. Oh, sit down, sit down, Dick. Oh, I know you didn't, Lom, but I've got to go anyway. I ought to have been back long ago. Well, I hope you get along all right, Abner. Yeah, thank you, Dick, and I'm glad you come over. Well, I'll see you later, then. So long. So long, Dick. I hope Dick never taken no defense at what I said. I just mind I busting to tell you about this new idea. Oh, yeah, well, he never thought nothing about it. Uh, what is it, Lum? <laughs> Looky there. Huh? <laughs> Again, is there's what we're going to stock the store with. Stock the store? You mean we're going to put in a whole store full of these fountain pens? That ain't no fountain pen, Abner. That's a flashlight. Huh? Let me show you. See, just press that little button on the end there and... <laughs> Looky there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do know. Well, I ain't that the beatin'est thing that you ever seen. <laughs> what will they think of next? <laughs> well, try I would have swore you could have read a letter with it. I well, did I that. did, too, when I first seen it. The fellow brought it out last night to show it to me, and I tried for five minutes to write with it. Yeah. <laughs> about the time I decided it wouldn't work, he told me it was a flashlight. <laughs> I ain't told it well. It's pure silver, ain't it? No, it ain't silver, Abner. That's polished aluminum. Uh, lu- aluminum. I can't even, uh, never could speak that word. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, where's the business that we're going into, Lon? That's it, right there. You mean selling these flashlights? Yes, sir. We've got exclusive rights on it for Pine Ridge. I believe we can make enough money out of these to buy a new stock of goods for our store. Well, it's about as nice a gadget as i ever seen, Lon, but I, I don't know where we could sell that many or not. Why, sure we can. There's something for every member of the family. Sell the whole family one of them. Yeah. See, there, got a clip on it there and carry it right in your pocket like you would a fountain pen. Yeah, well, I do know. It's little, but as powerful a flashlight as you ever seen. Yeah. That fella says it'll throw a beam 200 foot. Look, yonder, let's cross there on the fur wall. Yeah. I know that the children will sure take to that, won't they? Oh, yeah, they can find a thousand uses for it. Yeah, yeah. Grown folks, too, for that goes. Handy to have around the house. Why, oh, sure. Look in the attic and down in the cellar and dark closets and all such as that. Natural, natural. Handy for mothers to look in the children's throats with. Body driving an automobile ought to be a thousand one of them. Fixing flat tars and reading the road signs and one thing or another. I know that that is a handy little contraption, ain't it? It sure oh. is. Yeah, I'd love to have one of them myself. And Elizabeth, now she needs one the worst way to use out there at the barn when she's doing up her chores or milking, feeding the stock and stuff like that. That's what I say. Everybody needs one. Yeah. These things will sell like hotcakes. Well, the only thing, old I'm just from looking at it, I'm feared they'll cost too much for most of uh, folks. Uh, uh, what, what do they cost? Well, the uh, price of them is 75 cents, but now, wait a minute. I ain't told you all my ideas. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a way figured out to where we can let every man, woman, and child in the United States have one of these. Yeah, things. well, now, wait a minute now, Lom. You're covering a lot of territory there. Now. Uh, here's my idea, I was thinking about getting some great big company interested in these, and naturally I thought about the Horlicks Malted Milk Corporation. Natural. You know, they was uh, nice enough to send out the Pine Ridge News first when uh, all of our friends wrote in for it a while back. Uh-huh. So I just sat down a while ago and wrote Mr. William Horlick a letter, personal. Oh, well, I believe I'm catching on yes, now. Listen to this. Mr. William Horlick, Racine, Wisconsin. Dear Mr. Horlick, 
We are sending uh, under separate cover a fountain pen flashlight, which we think you might be interested in, in using in an advertising campaign of some kind. Uh This is something that every man, woman, and child would appreciate having, and if you are interested, we can supply you with any number you want, as we are exclusive distributors for Pine Ridge. Yeah. Please let us hear from you by return mail. Your old friends, Lum and Abner. Well, <laughs> don't as long as you sort of outdone yourself on that letter. Now, that does sound fine. Well, yeah, it ought to. I spent enough time on it. Yeah. <laughs> Abner, if Mr. Horlicks is interested in this proposition, we'll get that stock of groceries back in that store for before Elizabeth ever finds out a thing about us going out of business. All right, doggy, I believe you're on the right track, Rob. Just go ahead and make me a half partner. All right, doggy. <laughs> well, if Lum's idea works, the old fellows ought to soon be back in the store business again. And now, let's look in for just a moment on the Carter home, where we find Lucille Carter and her friend, Ann Hughes. Ann, I'm awfully worried about little Joan. Why, Lucille? She's not getting on well at school. You know, her teacher dropped in to talk to me about it yesterday afternoon. What seems to be the trouble? That's just it. I don't know. Her teacher says she's listless and restless in classes. She doesn't seem to be able to concentrate on her work. I wonder what can be the matter with her. I think I know, Lucille. Really? What? Nothing but hunger. Hunger? Nonsense. You know that I've always been very particular about Joan's food. Why, she's a well-fed child. Of course she is. Lucille, you don't realize how quickly children burn up food. Food doesn't stick with them like it does with adults. Joan probably gets hungry when she's at school, and so her energy sags. And she's so uncomfortable, she can't keep her mind on her schoolwork. Well, what can I do? I can't just force her to eat bigger meals. That would probably do her more harm than good. Let her carry Horlick's malted milk tablets to school with her. Horlick's tablets? Yes. And then when she begins to feel hungry or feel tired, she can dissolve a few tablets in her mouth. They're nourishing and energy-giving, and they'll keep her from getting too hungry or too tired to give her best to her schoolwork. Joan will love Horlick's malted milk tablets. All children do. Where can you buy these Horlick's tablets, Sam? At your drugstore. They come in both natural and chocolate flavor. In a small 10-cent size flask, and in other larger sizes. And there's a mighty fine tip for all parents. Horlick's malted milk tablets, like Horlick's malted milk in powder form, are made from only rich, full cream milk and the finest of wheat and malted barley and are a fine bodybuilding food for growing children. This is Carlton Bricker speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick's, who bid you all good night and good health.